Cool. Is everyone ready? Everyone rolling? Yeah. Okay. I'm kicking off with the first, I guess, the easy question. My name? <laughs> <laughs> That's no, the easiest one. Well, well, <laughs> we're assuming you know that. I do. I so, think I do. So, I guess, kicking off with another obvious question, okay. how does it feel to be part of the London MCM Comic Club? Oh, it feels great. Um, I'm excited to be here. I'm a little jet lagged. Uh, this is up since 1.30 this morning, so I haven't been able to go back to sleep, but uh, I'm excited. I mean, there's a lot of really cool people already at the table, and uh, it's, just, it's just nice to meet people. Of course, when fans do meet you, I'm sure you get the same questions kind of all the time. There must be like key questions fans always ask. What are the most common ones? What are the ones that fans always seem to want to know? How did you get into Power Rangers? Or how do I become a voice actor? Or what was it like being on such and such show? What was it like being uh, this character? Um, which is kind of an odd question, you know. What was it like? You know, it's like, well, I, my answer is always like, I, it was cool. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's not exactly the answer they're looking for. I don't quite know the exact answer, but, just, you know. Yeah, those are those are the base, basic ones, the common what, ones. What is it like? What is it like? Here we go. Second longest running Power Ranger, uh, apart from like uh, what's called, uh, Jason. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it like? It was cool. <laughs> yeah. The. Played the same character most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I mean, that was it. Was the same character. Um, uh, I had I had grown as an actor though. Um, since, you know, the first, you know, run of my, uh, time on, on the show. Um, so it was kind of cool to go in and, uh, play him a little more mature and, uh, you know, it, they, when I first went back for space, I was basically the same guy, you know, um, and, uh, I wasn't doing anything really. Um, I think I may have started voiceover at that point. I can't remember. It was so close to when I had left. Um, and then, uh, Overdrive was, was, was kind of cool because it was so much later, you know, and then I got to go to New Zealand to work on it. Um, and, uh, and, you know, when I went through the script, it felt exactly like when I left the show, it's fairly cheesy, you know, it's a kid's show. Um, and then my dialogue was ridiculous and I adjusted just about every single line and they were totally fine with it, you know, which was... I did. I got to be the leader of the Retro Rangers, uh, which wasn't as cool for a couple of them, um, but uh, it was fun for me. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was enjoyable, and I, I could tell, like from that episode, just that you kind of grown right. the role as well, because you, you had a lot more experience behind it. It was rather different than when you started out. So you, it, you kind of you can always just tell when someone's kind of matured. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was actually really nice, and I, that's what I was going for too. Is trying to I wanted well, it's also kind of written into the script. Whereas like a couple of them had like superpowers, you know, and I was like, what? Well, I didn't know that they got superpowers after we left. Uh, so it was kind of cool for my character go to go in and kind of just do it old school and just jump around and jump on things and and you know battle that way. Plus, you got that cool body armor as well. I did get the body armor, yes, and I got to. Uh, explode you know the villain so it was kind of cool but i did have to say more phenomenal uh which i'd never said on the show <laughs> until that moment so. yeah. <laughs> with a big fireball you know I yeah just, you know obviously I mean, power rangers is one of those unique things in the sense that all these different iterations all these different generations of fans have come to it and rediscovered it what do you think, as a core, it is about it? That um, what, what's the magic of Power Rangers? Why does it have that universal and enduring appeal? And that's a great question. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I I think maybe it's uh, the the pace of it. Uh, maybe it's the structure that it's so easy to follow. Maybe it's you know the the action, the colors, the explosions. Um, you know, there's it's it reminds me of like well like I watch I grew up on like like kung fu theater you know just kung fu films I enjoyed them so much super cheesy totally wacky but cool fights and things like that and I loved that stuff growing up you know 
Um, so like Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee and those guys, you know, so it's kind of the same thing, I think. Uh, it's, I, I, I don't know, it's like you grow up and then with something and then that, that just becomes your thing. I'm surprised it's still going now um, because, you know, there's so many <laughs> awesome things to watch now. But, uh, yeah, I, don't, I really don't know. I don't know. There's, you know, there's some, some magic to it, I guess. Now, people have told me that the original series has s something different than what they've been doing, you know, in the last few years. But I, d I don't really yeah, follow this. Oh, where they change them out, you mean? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah. right. Oh, I see. I see. Um, the one thing I want to ask you is you, you play in a band as well. So yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? How did that all start? Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, I have a band. We're called I Shine. Um, we've been uh, around for about 13 years. Um, we have about, I want to say, 15 albums. Um, uh, some of those include our karaoke albums and, and a few that were not released digitally. But, uh, yeah, we've been going on for a while. But uh, how did we start? Uh, basically, it was, it was after Power Rangers, um, and I could not get a job. <laughs> I could not get a job to save my life. I was... Uh, I was I don't want to say homeless, but I was living with, you know, whoever would let me stay with them. I had a couple trash bags, literally trash bags full of clothes with me, a, a guitar and a broken cot that I had with me. I just moved into wherever I could. I was in kind of a pretty bad place for a couple of years. Um, and I had this guitar and I was depressed because I couldn't get a job. Um, and it, it was tough at that time there was because I'm I'm half Asian so I would go in my agent would send me in for Chinese guy and I'd go in and some other dude would walk in who was definitely Chinese <laughs> you know like like full on like you know and only in the mornings like this I'm like hello uh, but uh, other than that you know it's like I'm just this half Asian guy and sometimes hard to fit some people think I'm Hispanic um, so I couldn't get a job, you know, and um, and I, so anyways, I had this guitar with me uh, that I bought that I was going to learn to play at some point, and I had nothing better to do, so I started to learn to play. I taught myself to play, and uh, and through that, I taught myself to sing and write songs, and and that, that really kind of brought me out of that depression. I was able to express my emotions in that time through music. Um, I could play a chord that would express an emotion that I couldn't really say with words or, you know, and so it really kind of brought me out of it. Um, and then uh, I just realized that music had a lot of power. Um, and so I wanted to kind of give that out to the world as well. And, and so I formed a band and was like, we just want to have a positive message and, and see what happens. And, yeah, so that's kind of how the band formed. Um, about words obviously with voice acting you were part of that really exciting time with shows like Trigon where anime was just exploding in a completely uh, different way around the world. Can you talk a little bit about um, why you think that is? Why you think anime did explode in the way it did? I think people were ready for it. Uh, we were, I mean I grew up on cartoons that there was, there's not really any depth to them. They're still fun to watch, you know, Tom and Jerry and Popeye. They're just, they're fun to watch, but there wasn't, they didn't go dark or into deep places at all, and anime did. Anime was, you know, very, you know, theatrical, and the, the storylines were great. Um, eventually, we got ser the series, like the Batman series and stuff like that was much darker, um, and, uh, you know, obviously did well as, as, as well at that time. But, uh, yeah, the anime just exploded, I think, uh, because of that, you know. Akira being one of the first ones that I had seen that I knew was anime. And I was like, holy cow, what is this show? Um, and that really kind of got me into anime. Like, I just wanted to see more. But it wasn't accessible, as accessible. You know, we had, I don't know if, do you guys remember Blockbuster? <laughs> Are they still around? All right, so, uh, so yeah, when Blockbuster was around, I would, like, I would go and try to find anime. Um, 
and I didn't know how it was. I didn't, there was like volumes of anime, you know? And the problem is when I went in, there would be like volumes of one and then five and seven. And it's like, wait, what? And then you get it. And I was like, oh, I'm missing a lot, you know? Um, so now it's obviously different, but, uh, but then it was really tough, you know? Um, and, uh, I also think part of things being there, that, that kind of demand also kind of created that, that, uh, explosion, I guess that boom, um, people really wanted it and then, yeah, just kept growing. Me? Yeah. Like a musical? No, that's a great question. I haven't actually really... I've kind of just like fallen into everything that I'm into. Like voice acting wasn't something where I grew up and I was like, I want to become a voice actor. Playing in a band, music wasn't something where I was like, I want to become a musician or a rock star. Um, I did want to become an action star, though, from watching, you know, Kung Fu Theater and stuff. Um, but there's, I've always just kind of, like, fallen into something and been like, oh, this, this is kind of cool, <laughs> you know. Um, so, no, I haven't really thought about it. Um, but a Kung Fu musical <laughs> would be pretty wild. Um, and I'd be up for doing something like that. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Sure. Why not? This is this is my this is my dream. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, in terms of falling into things, you've fallen into some really great series with the voice acting. Is there one in particular, one role or one series that you've been part of there that really means the most to you? That means the most? Oh gosh. Um, I don't know if there's one. There are many. You know, a lot of them, like, I, Trigun changed it all for me, you know. Um, but then throughout, there's been so many. It's, uh, for me, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like, I don't know, moments in my life that, you know, it, at this time, because a lot of times the series will, you'll, it, it'll impact you quite a bit, you know. Um, or, or you'll work on something like Code Geass and then, just think oh this is a really cool show I hope people like it and then you meet people where something that you've worked on has changed their life or helped them through a, a dark time and then you realize how important those things are so for me there's a lot of uh series that I that I really like even some of the smaller things that I've worked on where I had no idea you know the impact that it would have even shows that I hated <laughs> or games that I like games that I didn't like working on or whatever had some kind of value to me you know <laughs> oh I'll tell you this one because I don't know the name of the game um, but I worked on this video game um, have no idea what it was called I got ca called in the night before they were like hey can you come and do some uh, miscellaneous voiceover for a video game and I was like yeah sure um, so I go in and then they're like, all right, well, you're going to be playing Goblin number 13. And so I go in, and I'm, like, looking, and I was, like, looking at the script. And I was, like, trying to find the character so I could see what I'm saying, figure out what I'm supposed to do. And I look, and Goblin number 13 just has, like, vowels, like O's, O-A-A-A, E-I-I-I. -I -I. I'm like, what is this? You know, and I was like, hey, it's just, uh, what, are, what are all these vowels? What do these mean? I was like, oh, they're Goblin noises. I was like, what do you What do you mean the goblin? We goblin noises, and then it's like, oh yeah, yeah, you're just gonna, you know, just do some goblin noises, and I was like, I don't, I don't want a goblin noise. I'd never done any kind of like character voices or anything, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know any goblins. Uh, uh, what? He's like, you know, just like a, you know, you know, like a goblin, and and I had this guinea pig when I was little that I would talk to, and uh, and I was like, Rrr! and it was, it was like, yeah, you do that. And then I was like, okay, cool. So for four hours, I was like, Aah! you know, I'm like, fall off a cliff, Aah! you know, get stabbed, Aah! you know. So I did that for four hours, screaming, top of my lungs, just, Aah! and uh, at the end of the session, I couldn't talk. I was like, <laughs> and uh, I was like, thanks, guys. And the next day, I was supposed to work on this new series. Where I'm supposed to play a young kid voice, but I couldn't do it. And so I got replaced because I couldn't do the voice. Um, so anyways... 
So even something like that had an impact in my life. Because never again will I agree to a video game so close to working on another show. You know, especially if I have to do a kid voice. So it has... Never yeah. full goblin. <laughs> <laughs> I went full goblin for, for that for sure. Because it was the first kind of like character -y thing that I'd ever done. So I'm like, I'm going for it. Um, and yeah, I paid for it for sure. <laughs> but you know it's true but then at the same time it's like I had to, that's, that's kind of my mentality on on anything that I work on you know any show I just I do I go full on like I really want to get into the character because I feel like if I'm not 100% in somebody out there watching is going to be like ah yeah, you know and exactly that goblin 13 <laughs> really stood out um, but yeah I don't even know the name of the game so I always ask people you guys play any games where a goblin was like I don't know. Uh, but, but if you hear a goblin, it's like, Rrr! and you just, that's Johnny, you know? That would be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> that would be annoying. That would, that they were like, <laughs> they were like, no, no, we just wanted you to go, ooey. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. yeah. I don't like that. That's, it's, a cook, it's one of those cooking ones. It's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Um, speaking of, like, overusing your voice, is there, are there any other, are there any other tricks that you give anybody doing voice acting um, that would be kind of like if someone said to you, hey, you know, I'm getting into it, what, what if I, if there was any rules, what would I do? Oh, gosh. The, the Johnny on Bosch rules. <laughs> give us a top five. Well, <laughs> um, let's see. I don't know. There's there's a lot of things. I've learned quite a few things, you know. Uh, there's just uh, how to work the mic, um, how to how to be in the studio around producers and directors and other people, how to be respectful. Um, uh, there's just so many things, you know. Um, I'll maybe I'll start with that or something. So if you go in on a, you're working on a show, a lot of times you don't know what you're working on. Sometimes you will, you have an idea, um, but many times you just go in, you have no idea, then the director, the writer might be there, the creator might be there, producer might be there, whoever, and then uh, they tell you what the show is, who you're playing, what you're supposed to be doing, and a lot of times in your mind you think, this sounds stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like the dumbest idea in the world. Uh, and some people voice that, or they laugh, you know, when they hear something ridiculous, you know. Um, but I always kind of play play it safe. I'm like, you don't know what it's going to be like at the end, you know. Um, so just always be respectful, you know. Take it all in. You know, if it's supposed to be funny, then, yeah, you can, you know, be lighthearted about it. But, yeah, take it all in and, and you know, commit yourself 100%. Go full, full goblin. <laughs> Go full goblin on it. And, uh, yeah, just commit yourself to it, you know. Um, I don't know. Other tips would be uh, try not to drink like a ton of milk or <laughs> a, a lot, eating a lot of cheese beforehand, so you're not all smacky. Um, uh, yeah, try not to pop your peas. You know, pass them under the mic or something. Uh, yeah, have a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess there, there's quite a few things, but it's kind of it, it depends on the person too. You know, it, like it, I'd have to see what somebody is doing to understand what they're doing right or what they're doing wrong, and then I could be like, well, yeah, you shouldn't be doing this. You I should maybe... Voice now, so. uh, <laughs> I, I'm not. I don't. But there are plenty of people that do. Um, like to go full <laughs> 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 I'm gonna, yes, for nine ninety nine. <laughs> I'm talking about going all out. Yeah. Um, Bash the Stampede, I think, of all the characters you've played, is a completely unique one. Um, can you talk a little bit about why you think of all the characters in that wonderful world of anime is one that people still have so much affection for. And he's just a likable character, you know? Love and peace, you know? That was it's his thing, you know? Um, he didn't want to hurt anybody, you know? Um, he was just kind of, I don't know how to... I, I mean, there's there's so much to that one. Uh, for me, also, it's it's very special because it was the first one I worked on. Um, had yeah, I was you know like I had mentioned before, I was on Power Rangers. The very 
you know, cheesy kids show. I called myself the background ranger because I was in the background most of the time, like, right, you know, or <laughs> waiting for a moment to go like, yay. Uh, but I didn't say a whole lot, you know, especially earlier on. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't really an actor then either. I was just like kind of, when's the fight scenes happening? Uh, and so it was, you know, through that dark time where I'd like learned music and was like, I need to figure out this acting thing. Then I booked that role and I was like really committing myself and like, I got to take this seriously. Had a great director that really walked me through. Uh, technical things as far as like work in a mic, being a voice actor, and was very patient with me in that time too. And uh, but for that character specifically, he was just so wild and so goofy at times. And I was trying to understand why is he so goofy. Um, and then you don't realize until later on in the series, for me at least, it was he was it was he was putting on this facade. Yeah, I mean it is his personality, but. He's really pushing it and really putting it on because he doesn't want people to know, you know. Um, well, he doesn't want to know who he is and things like that at, at, at certain times. But um, I think I'm going off on a tangent. But, uh, yeah, I think it's there's so many elements to that, that person, Vash, that I think people like. And I think it's just because he's really just genuine. He's a genuine, nice guy. Um, and he's just a person you would be rooting for, you know. The guy you want to go have donuts with. Um, he might not share, but... <laughs> yeah, maybe that's that's not a good idea. Speaking of donuts... Yes. Uh, I'm trying to segue here. I'm to find glazed. Um, yeah. I just go for glazed. <laughs> you, um, that sound getting lifted. <laughs> It's always his fault, though. <laughs> I just want to put that out there that any of those this is, this is pranks, <laughs> any of those, this Jason, Frank, if you're watching this, it is all your fault, and you know that. Do you have any memorable stories of him getting, uh, getting you up into high beams? So to speak, like, uh, Absolutely. I have plenty of stories. Would you like Some to I, I will probably never share. Um, <laughs> Some I, I I share oftentimes. Uh, there's I don't know what stories you guys have heard. Uh, I've heard about him peeing in his pants and running into the river. Yeah, there's that one. Yeah, there's that one. All right, so you heard that one. Yes, Wait, did you hear that one from me online? <laughs> All right, I'll tell you that one real quick. All right, so this is Turbo Movie. And uh, we're having a really rough day. All right, so it's freezing. Um, and uh, we got to run out into this ocean. First off, they make Jason Frank and I jump off of this. It was like maybe 15-foot cliff onto the ground. You know, it was a beach, but it was like wet and mad. It, it was ground. It was solid ground, basically. Um, and it's pretty high up. You know, looking up, you're like, ah, 15 feet's not a big deal. But then when you're up there, you're like, holy cow, this is pretty high up there. And then we're thinking, like, shouldn't they put mats down? They're not really, are they seeing the ground? And they did not put mats down. They, they call this all sorts of names. Like, yeah, the producer, the guy was shooting it at the time, actually, um, because there was a few people directing throughout. And so it was, like, calling us names, calling us chicken and all this. And we were like, <laughs> we're like, what? And so anyway, so we're having a rough day <clears throat> on the beach, cold. We finally do that scene, and now we're down at the beach, and now we're supposed to run into the water to go save our friends. And... uh Jason, and we're waiting there for a while before, you know, action, and we're just like, man, when is this going to happen? Oh, you ready? Okay, they're ready, and Jason's standing in front of me, and he's like, and I had heard him a little while earlier just kind of saying that he needed to run the restroom, but we thought we were going to be shooting right away, and he didn't, and he's standing there. The girls are kind of behind me, and I'm looking at his face, and I see his face go, <laughs> like his eyes kind of like start going in, right? And I was like, what? And then... Then I look down, and then I just see his pants getting soaked, like he's peeing. And I was like, I was like, what? What are you? And so as I'm like, what are you? Action! And then he's like, runs into the water, and I was like, wait, what? And I start running. I'm like, oh no, I gotta follow him into the water. And so all is coming into my face as I'm like swimming into the ocean. He thought it was funny. It was funny afterwards, but man, 
Yeah. Jason Frank. I, he doesn't like that story. <laughs> he doesn't like that. He's, well, there's some, there are quite a few stories. Yeah, there's some, and we had good times. We did. And we were, uh, yeah, we were, I mean, that was, I didn't go to college. I did, I registered to go to college. I did end up trying to go, but then ended up on Power Rangers. And that was like, you know, for us, that was like us goofing off and having fun. Those were our, our college years was Power Rangers, basically. But, uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. There's a lot of those stories. <laughs> I don't think we can broadcast any more of them. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you guys so much.